Okay, well, regarding metadata, in Australian Antarctic Data Centre, we use the DIFF metadata standard, which is a which stands for Directory Interchange Format. That's a standard that was developed and maintained by the Global Change Mastery Directory. They're a part of NASA, based um, out of the Goddard Space Centre in Maryland, just north of Washington, D.C. Uh, the reason why we use this standard is because it's the standard that's used by the entire international Antarctic community. There was about 20 sorry, about 15, 16 years ago, um, the Antarctic community got together, decided they needed to settle on a metadata standard rather than using disparate um, standards that each country were looking at, um, and DIFF was the one that was um, was chosen. And as part of that, the, um, the Global Change Master Directory, they provide metadata support uh, to the Antarctic community as well as providing an Antarctic sort of um, metadata portal. So currently we have about just over 2,500 metadata data records, 90% of which point to um, data, uh, a lot of which is public, although not all of it because we do have some commercial and confidence data and obviously we don't make data public until the scientists have managed to have a chance to publish it themselves. So as for our data, we, as I said, we have that in the diff format which you can see in blue up the top, but we also convert that to a large number of other formats. Um, so on this little page here, all the blue squares are metadata formats and the red squares are metadata repositories. So we convert our diff standard into the ISO 191115 standard, which is just listed there as ISO. We also have a marine community profile version of that, an ANSLIC profile version of that, and we also have this other funky one, this ANS version. So that's just an intermediate step. Um, so ANS then take our ISO ANS metadata record and then they convert that into RIFCS, which then is made available via the ANS repository. So as you can see, I've listed the, the ones that I can, th the organisations I can think of that harvest our metadata records. So you can see there's quite a few there. Most of them just take the, the plain ISO. I have just realised I've put Bomb and Thomson Reuters in the wrong section because they actually take our plain diff metadata. They don't take the ISO. They just take the regular diff. So, um, but anyway, that's all by the by. So, but what happens sort of here, one thing I should point out is that most of these, all of these people that are harvesting our metadata record, they do so via something called WebDAV. So we have all of our records that are in web accessible folders and we put those up there and then people just grab them and they harvest them when, when they're ready. Uh, I should point out that the Australian Spatial Data Directory, they require us to use GeoNetwork to, um, for us to get our records into their system but we haven't quite got that running properly yet. So that's more of a sort of wait and watch this space. So the reason why we do all this harvesting is because it helps increase exposure not only for us but also for our scientists. So the more metadata repositories we can get our records out into, the greater the, um, the greater the spread and dissemination of all these metadata records there is. And that means that, that gives our scientists much more chance of their data being noticed and therefore being picked up by other, um, by other scientists and then obviously they get cited or it could lead to further collaborations for the scientists themselves. Okay, there are a few issues though with, um, with this. Um, at the top point there, as I say, in our experience, harvesting is usually a bit more pull than push. So, whereas people like BOM or ANS or whatever, they're grabbing the metadata records off, off us when it's convenient for them. Um, some organisations are good at doing that regularly or automatically, others, it, they don't do it quite so often. And that can lead to sync problems because we're updating our metadata records all the time. And if somebody hasn't harvested our records for a few months, then the set that they've got obviously gets out of date. So we sort of monitor that a little bit every now and then, but that's just more of a I remember to go look every now and then process rather than anything being automatic. So we could probably improve that. Also, there's a slight issue with reharvesting, which I'll just show you in this diagram. So I've grayed out sort of most of it, but what happens here is that ANS, you can see they get our metadata from us. So it comes down through diff and into ANS, but ANS also harvest metadata records from the Australian Ocean Data Network and they grab an ISO version of our, of our data. And likewise, SUSE, the Southern Ocean Observing System, also harvest metadata from the AODN as well as getting it directly from us. So the problem here, there is that we then have two copies of one metadata record which can end up in the same system. And sometimes these records aren't quite the same and that's because other organisations like the Australian Ocean Data Network and, and ANS, so they will they tailor the metadata records very slightly to suit their purposes, which is fair enough because it's their repository, they, they're, um, it's 
their catalogue, so they should make them look sort of how it fits for them. But what that sort of has the effect of, of, of is that when the records all end up in an, in this other you know, next repository, is that even though they're the same records, they won't look quite the same. So we've sort of tried to address that by adding a UUID to all of our records so that that gets preserved all the way through so that users can then at least, if they sue two records which look to be similar, they can compare the UUID and go, okay, that is the same record, so I only worry about looking at this one. And we also try and add a point of truth URL to um, all of our records to point back to the Australian Antarctic Data Centre original so that at least users can then get back to the master record. Um, okay, so that's basically it for harvesting and for our project cycle. So thanks for listening.